Welcome to another exciting histological series. Today we're looking at connective tissue proper. This is Dr. Bison Muntali. Let's get into our lesson. Okay, so remember that we offer courses in all the medical courses, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, biochemistry, and organic chemistry. You can register for lessons on the number that is displayed on the screen, plus 260-975-497-790. Alright, so what are the objectives for today's lesson? By the end of this session, you should be able to classify connective tissue, name the location and general composition of loose connective tissue, name the different cell types that occur in connective tissue, as well as the structure and function of each one of them. Describe the location, arrangement, light microscopic structure and function of different types of protein fibers. Remember, there are three types of protein fibers, collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers that we're going to see as this video progresses. Describe the appearance, structure, and function of mucus and dense connective tissue. And lastly, name the various diseases and conditions affecting connective tissue. Before we go into uh, the histological slides that we're going to draw today, let's have a brief introduction on what connective tissue is. So connective tissue, you must know, is the most abundant type of tissue in the body. It provides a matrix that supports and physically connects other tissues and cells together to form the organs of the body. Connective tissue consists of cells and extracellular matrix, which is denoted as ECM. Extracellular matrix consists of different combinations of protein fibers and ground substance. The specific composition of the extracellular matrix determines the biochemical properties of the connective tissue. Alright, so the connective tissue will bind, it will anchor, and it will support various cells, tissues, and organs of the body. The connective tissue matrix contains a numerous cell line type that provides protection and defense against bacterial invasion and foreign bodies so this you must know that inside of protective tissue there are white blood cells of immunity so connective tissue proper is classified as either loose connective tissue or dense connective tissue depending on the amount the type arrangement and abundance of cells, fibers, and ground substance. This is very important. Now, before we go into the slides that we're going to draw, let's classify connective tissue. So connective tissue can either be embryonic connective tissue, which is also referred to as mucus connective tissue. This is the first connective tissue that we're going to look at. Secondly, we have adult connective tissue. Under the adult connective tissue, there are three things that we're going to look at. We're going to look at connective tissue proper, which can either be loose or dense connective tissue, supporting connective tissue, which is cartilage or bone, and last we have, lastly we have special connective tissue, which is blood, the lymphatic, and the adipose tissue. All right, let's get into the types of connective tissue on the slides that we're going to draw. The first one that we're going to look at is mucus connective tissue that is found in the umbilical cord. So what we are required to do is that we're required to inspect the slide with our naked eye. You just look at it and note the three blood vessels passing through the core of the umbilical cords. These are two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein embedded in an embryonic connective tissue mesenchyme called Watton's jelly. Under the microscope, examine this tissue, observe the large spindle-shaped or stellate star-shaped primitive fibroblasts with delicate cytoplasmic processes forming an interlacing network in a pale ground substance consisting of jelly-like mucus tissue in which are the wavy collagenous fibers. Okay, 
So then pay attention to the amniotic membrane, epithelium rather, on the surface of the cord. What type of epithelium is it? Then this one, for this slide, you're supposed to sketch it at high power and at low power. So let's look at the low power uh, histological diagram and then we look at the high power. So this is what we call the umbilical cord. Now the umbilical cord has got three vessels. This is one vein. It's called the umbilical vein. This is the umbilical artery. And this is the umbilical artery. Okay. Surrounding the umbilical arteries and vein, this is the connective tissue. This is what we call mucus connective tissue. This is called Watton's jelly. Now, Watton's jelly is made up of fibroblasts and connect and uh, it's and, and collagen protein fibers. You can't see them here because this is at low power. So what you're supposed to do is that you are supposed to draw this diagram at low power. You label the vein and you label the umbilical arteries and you just label this as Watton's jelly. Now let's move on to high power. This is high power. Okay. So this is Watton's jelly. The artery and the vein is not shown here. So now this... These dark cells that you see here, this, this one here, and these, these are fibroblasts. So as you can see, this fibroblast here is connected to this fibroblast here by a fibrolytic network, okay, process. There's a process that is connecting this fibroblast to this fibroblast. So these are fibroblasts. What you can see, this here. This is what we call collagen protein fibers. So in the mucus connective tissue, you find collagen protein fibers. So collagen protein fibers and you find fibroblasts. What you find here, this is just adipose tissue. The white here is adipose tissue. And then this epithelia that you see here, this is the umbilical epithelia. You're supposed to identify what type of epithelia this is okay so you're supposed to know is this simple columnar epithelia simple cuboidal epithelia or simple squamous epithelia just by looking at it you can see that these appear like columnar cells so you can like cuboidal cells rather so you can classify it like that so draw this at high power so for the mucus connective tissue draw it at high power and at low power okay Let's move on to dense irregular connective tissue that is found in the sublingual glands. Now, the sublingual glands, we already saw them when we were doing exocrine glands. Okay, so this is the familiar preparation that we're going to see very soon. And it gives a good example of the position of connective tissue in fleshy organs. So, the marrow stain shows the thick bundle of collagen fibers. This is what we are con we are concerned in seeing the thick bundle of collagen fibers. Now remember that for this slide, you're only going to sketch it at low power just to show the bundle of collagen fibers. So the collagen fibers will separate the parenchyma in two lobules. So what you see between two lobules, that connective tissue is made up of collagen fibers. Okay, let's look at it. So this is the low power. So this is a sublingual gland. Remember, we said these poorly stained whitish uh, areas here, these are what we call mucus arsenide. And these ones that are stained uh, purple here, these are serous arsenide. This is a lobule. And this is a lobule also. What separates this lobule and this lobule here? is a duct called the interlobular duct. Now, between this interlobular duct is where you find collagen fibers, connective tissue. Okay, So this is the dense irregular connective tissue made up of collagen fibers. You are only sketching this at low power. All right. We're going to appreciate them very nicely if we look at a high power diagram that we're going to look at very soon. Okay. Dense regular connective tissue. This we're going to see in a tendon. So you should note the regularly arranged 
collagen bundle with a wavy course. Fibro blasts form rows of dark elongated nuclear between the fiber bundles. You sketch it at low power and at high power. Okay, so let's look at it at low power. This is high low power. So this is dense irregular connective tissue that is found in a tendon at low power. So as you can see, okay, what you can see here, these, this is low power tendon, the low power tendon. You can't really appreciate them, but these are regular. Okay, they're very regular. They are, they are arranged in a regular shape, and you can see these dots between dots, 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 dots. Those are fibroblasts. Let's look at it at uh, high power. So you draw this at low power, and then you move to high power. This is high power. Have you seen this? So have you seen how regular the fibers are? This is a fiber running like this, another fiber running like this, another fiber running like this, and and they are regular. They are arranged in parallel to each other, and they are regular. The type of fibers that are found here are collagen fibers. Collagen. Now, you need to know what type of collagen makes up the fibrous connective tissue of a tendon. Okay, so these are collagen fibers. Collagen fibers. Okay. And what you see here, this dark nucleus, this, this here, and this, these are fibroblasts. So you should label them as such. This is dense, irregular connective tissue made up of collagen fibers filled with fibroblasts. Okay. Now let's go to loose areola connective tissue. So this preparation is of loose areola connective tissue. So you need to identify collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. You should draw this at low power, also at high power. Okay, so what you're going to see here is that uh, you're going to see collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers, but you're also going to see macrophages, which have ingested particles, and also you're going to see fibroblasts. Let's look at them. So this is loose areola connective tissue. This is loose areola connective tissue. This portion here and this portion. Loose areola connective tissue is found beneath the skin, beneath the, the dermis of the skin. It is also known as the hypodermis or the subcutaneous layer. Okay, so this is the low power diagram. So this is epithelia. It is also found beneath epithelia. Epithelia that is in the small intestines. As you can see, these are glands here. This is a gland. Remember when we were drawing glands, simple tubular glands in the epithelium. These are the same glands here. And then underneath this gland, you have this basement membrane. Underneath this basement membrane, that's where you find the loose areola connective tissue. So this is the low power representation of a loose connective tissue also this side high power so this is a poorly done diagram let me show you something that is good okay so now this is loose connective tissue at high power what you see these are collagen fibers these are stained very pink here or red are collagen fibers these cells here are uh, fibroblasts okay and what you see here poorly stained these are elastic fibers let me show you something that is stained by methylene blue methylene blue is very excellent in denoting or exposing fibers called protein fibers so what you see here these lines that are very thin these are what we call elastic fibers and this is a diagram you should draw at high power these are elastic fibers and then these, these ones here, these fibers that are running like this, these ones here, these, yes, you can see that, these. These are collagen fibers. And then these big cells here that appear to have these dark things inside. These are macrophages with phagocytosed materials. And then these other cells that you can see, like this here, this here, those are fibroblasts. So you should label all of these. 
let's go into that again so these are elastic fibers these are collagen fibers these are macrophages and then these are fibroblasts okay let's move now let's look at reticular fibers slide 63 in the liver so this preparation demonstrates the dense network of reticular fibers in the liver in order for you to see the reticular fibers in the liver we use what we call the silver impregnation technique which will stain the reticular fibers in the liver black so hence they are said to be agrophilic so you sketch this at high power so i'm just showing you this is low power so these are reticular fibers you are not supposed to draw this you're only observing this these are reticular fibers in the liver what you're supposed to draw is this so these that you see here these here these are reticular fibers so just pick a portion like this portion here and demonstrate the reticular fibers okay let's move on and look at the last type of fibers that we're looking at in this video and that was the last type of fibers you looked at in your histology dag uh, lab lab these are elastic fibers that are seen from the iota so the elastic fibers we use hematoxylin to demonstrate them okay so you should observe the middle thick layer of the artery called the tunica media that's where you find the elastic fibers in the iota remember the blood vessels have got three layers the tunica intima which has the epithelium the tunica media which has the muscle layer and the connective tissue and you have the tunica externa so here we are focusing on the tunica media which contain the wavy lamella of black stained elastic fibers let's look at them so you should make a sketch at low power and high power so this is low power these wavy fibers that you see here these are the elastic fibers the wavy so this the wavy fibers so these are elastic fibers so make this diagram at low power so here this is the lumen okay and then these are the let me just repeat the low power and then these ones here these are the ones you're supposed to draw at low power these those are the elastic fibers let's look at them at high power high power these are the elastic fibers so these that are very regularly arranged these lines here those are the elastic fibers that's what you are supposed to draw the lumen is this side okay after the lumen then you have here this is the tunica media which contains the elastic fibers all right so that was the slide the last slide of uh connective tissue that we we're looking at in the lab after this you're supposed to answer the exercise what are the two types of stem cells that give rise to cells of the connective tissue okay so this read janquilla chapter 5 you're going to find all of the answers for the following cells draw their structures state the type of connective tissue they are found state whether they are fixed or wandering and their functions wandering here simply means are they moving or they're just in a fixed position so mast cells kufa cells monocytes plasma cells fibroblasts osteocrasts chondrocytes adipocytes neutrophils langerhan cells all right so this is the 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 the, form, the format for the table that you're supposed to take when you are answering your questions for question two okay for question two so this is question two okay so for answering this question use this table here you draw the connective tissue the type of cells and the function of cells the last question question three up to six question three what are the types of t lymphocytes and their functions what a type what type of connective tissue are the following the tendons the dura mater the capsules the aponeurosis and the ligaments number five in the umbilical cord the umbilical vein is from left or the right side 
when this vein degenerates after birth, what structure does it form? So this is very important. Number six and the last question. List any five connective tissue disorders and specify which protein fiber is affected in each. All right. I've had a good time explaining these connective tissue fibers to you. I hope you are going to make the most out of this video and learn and get very good marks in your lab. This is Dr. Bison EM. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share this link and this channel to your friends. And let's medicine together the Unza way. I'll see you in the next video.